is playing recordings of bird sounds actually bad for the birds themselves? A lot of people seem to think so, but it is an interesting debate. In this video, we're gonna look at the science, we're gonna look at all of the studies that have looked at this, and I am going to give my own recommendations for playing bird calls as a recreational birder, coming up right after this. Hello guys, my name is Eddie. I'm a wildlife biologist and on this channel, I do a lot of nature and birding stuff. So subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of that. So first, before I answer this question, if playing bird sounds is bad, I think it is important just to make sure that you know what playback means. And what playback means is just the recording of the bird sound. So through the rest of the video, when I refer to the word playback, that's what I'm talking about. It's first important to note that it's not only recreational bird watchers that play playbacks. Of course, recreational bird watchers play playbacks to get birds to come into a better place so that they can see them, so that they can take better photos. But scientists also use playbacks in their scientific studies. Playbacks can help scientists know how many birds live in a certain area, and they can also tell us how different species specialize in certain habitats. And this can be very useful information for the conservation of birds. And it's also a way for us to decipher what different sounds mean to birds, which is really important just for learning about the basic biology, about the ecology and evolution of birds as well. For example, by using playbacks, scientists have actually found that in house finches, the male house finches that sing more complex songs are actually more attractive to females. So there's been tons of studies that have used playbacks to study sexual selection like this, but it's also pretty cool. There's playbacks have been used to study various aspects of bird behavior. For example, in jays, they've actually found that jays can signal specific things about a predator in an area, like specifically what that predator is doing, whether that predator is moving or perched. And scientists have been able to figure this out by using playbacks. So playbacks are clearly useful for researching the birds themselves and just also their conservation. So are playbacks all bad? I mean, already with that, no. But as a recreational birder, if you should use playbacks or not is the big question, right? So over a decade ago, David Sibley wrote a blog post online. And in case you don't know who David Sibley is, He's like the Michael Jordan of birding in North America. He has written like, I think it might be the best selling field guide. In my opinion, it's the best field guide in North America. And David is not a scientist with a PhD, but he does know birds really, really well. He spent more time in the field than just about anyone else. And in this blog post, he listed the pros and cons of using playbacks from a birder's perspective. So on the pro side, he said that using playbacks is just an effective way to view and locate birds, obviously. And one indirect benefit of this is that it can provide educational experiences to the people who are viewing the birds which can hopefully help bird conservation. But on the negative side, playbacks obviously alter bird behaviors, potentially stressing them out and just negatively impacting them in lots of different ways. Now, since then, the American Birding Association and some other organizations have outlined just some general guidelines on how birders should use playback. So I'm gonna go over those real quick. So basically what this boils down to is you should choose the place where you do the playbacks and also choose the way you're doing the playback with overall care. So for example, don't play them so that they're very loud and don't play them for excessively long. Also, you should not disturb high risk birds. So if a bird is endangered or threatened, then it's a good idea not to bother it. And overall, these guidelines have said, it's just good to respect other birders in the area. So for example, if you see another birder looking at a bird and the bird is taking a photograph of it, um, if you play the playback and the bird flies away from that birder over to you, well, you just ruin the experience for that other birder. So that's just another reason that doesn't even have to do with the well-being of the birds themselves, but just has to do with respect for other birders. So those are the general guidelines in a nutshell that organizations like the American Birding Association have given out. And to be honest, I would say I for the most part agree with them, but I'll tell you at the end of the video how I approach playback. So be sure that you watch to the end of the video. But again, the big question we want to answer here is 
How do playbacks actually affect birds? How bad are they for birds? Or are they, in some cases, actually good for birds? So first, it's clear that playing playbacks absolutely changes their behavior. If you've ever done it before, you will know that for actually most species of songbirds in North America, if you play the playback, it will probably come towards you. Not always, but depending on the species, there's a very good chance that it'll come towards you and you'll be able to get a much better view of it than if it was far away. But not only will birds move, they can also alter the way they're singing. So for example, they've done studies on canyon wrens and they've showed that when a playback is played, canyon wrens will actually adjust the frequency of their song, probably because they think that a rival is nearby. They've also done studies to see how birds change their vocalizations over a longer period of time in response to a playback. So for example, there was this one study done where they looked at how Eurasian sparrow hawk playbacks affected uh, the vocalizations of great tits over a longer period of time. And what they found was that over time, the great tits actually reduced the amount that they were singing, even when they didn't hear the playback. So the way that these changes in bird behavior actually would affect the well-being of the birds is a pretty interesting question, but we will talk more about that in a little bit. What is super interesting though, is that they have done studies that have shown that birds can actually eventually recognize that it is just a playback and that it's not actually uh, a real bird that's singing. So for example, there's this one study in 2013 where they played these playbacks. It was for two South American bird species. Uh, you know, initially when they were playing the playbacks, the birds were reacting to it. But then after 20 days, the birds stopped reacting to it. They basically took no notice of the playbacks. So this suggested that uh, that the birds learned that the playbacks weren't real birds and they just stopped caring about them. And in fact, it was noted in the study that one pair of birds actually built a nest right next to the speaker that was playing the playback. So this is potentially good news that some species of birds actually can learn that playbacks are just playbacks and not real birds, and maybe they won't really let it affect their life and their well-being. But up until this point, we've only talked about how playbacks actually impact behavior. We actually haven't really talked about the physiological response. You know, that's actually really gonna help us answer the question, how stressed out are birds from this and how is it actually impacting them directly? The thing is, a lot of people say that playbacks stress birds out. Uh, people obviously can see how birds move around and that they vocalize more, um, which could mean that the birds are actually stressed out, but how do you not know that the birds are having fun? Well. A great way to test this is by looking at the actual stress hormones that are released inside the bodies of the birds. And this has actually been studied a little bit, but the studies have produced some mixed results. So there's one study that looked at how dark-eyed juncos and cast and sparrows uh, reacted to playbacks. And of course, the birds exhibited a big change in behavior, but they actually measured their stress hormones and they didn't see any change in their stress hormones. However, there was another study done on European nuthatches and rufous wing sparrows. And they did actually find that playing playbacks did affect the corticosterone levels in these birds, but they did not find that it affected other stress hormones like testosterone. And what they found was that the changes in the stress hormones in these birds uh, in reaction to the playback was actually significantly less than if an actual bird, an actual rival bird was in their presence. So looking at these different studies, there's some potential points that we can take away from this. First, it means that the stress responses can actually vary between different species of birds. Second, it means that uh, stress from human playbacks might be significant, but just not as significant compared to the activity of other birds in the wild. And third, when you actually look at the way that scientists study birds, this is kind of getting away from why this is relevant to us uh, as recreational birders. But if you're actually trying to evaluate um, the ethics of the way that scientists study birds, there's different ways uh, to gather data on birds. You know, one is playbacks, um, but another way is to actually capture birds. You can misnet birds, for example, and you can handle them, do hand measurements and stuff. Um, which there's many advantages to that. But what these studies suggest is that if the stress responses from playbacks and birds really aren't that big compared to other things like other birds in the wild, 
then maybe capturing birds and actually handling them to study them might cause a much larger stress stress in comparison to playbacks. Now just to add to this section, I'm gonna share a few more things that scientists have found. They've actually found that the identity of a specific singing bird has had an effect on how stressed out that bird is. So for example, they did a study with song sparrows and they played the song of an actual recording of neighbor song sparrows and then they played a song of just a stranger song sparrow, which to a human sounds no different, but to the sparrows themselves, it probably sounds a lot different. And they actually did find a variation in the levels of testosterone response um, between these two types of playbacks. And then they also did a study just a few years ago on curve-billed thrashers and Abert's towhees, and they tested whether the duration of the playback affected the responses of the stress hormones in these birds and they found that there was no impact on how long they played the playback for on the stress hormones of these birds. Now, does this mean that you should go out and play a playback for an hour straight to try to attract a bird to you? I would say absolutely not, but what it means is that at least in a couple species, you know, this probably doesn't affect the birds. To be honest, how playbacks affect the stress hormones in birds, although it has been studied and there are more studies out there than what I'm referring to in this video, I would just say that this needs to be studied way more. I would say we're probably at the tip of the iceberg with this. There are just so many species of birds out there and we just don't know how playbacks affect each species of bird. Um, because again, like I said earlier, I'm sure it can really vary between species how they're impacted by playbacks. But now we're getting to the most important question here and that's how playbacks impact the nesting and the survival of species. Because at the end of the day, even if birds have elevated levels of stress hormone, even if it alters their behavior a bit, if it actually negatively impacts them, really depends on does this decrease their chances of survival. So before I get into the science about this, if you think about it, the reason why a playback would decrease the chances of a bird's survival or reproduction is because when you play a playback, Probably what that bird thinks is, in most situations, is probably that it's a rival bird, that it's another bird uh, invading its territory. So it gets distracted from whatever activity it's engaged in, whether it's um, feeding its nestlings or foraging or just staying alert for predators. So they've actually done studies that have looked at the susceptibility of birds to predation when they are engaged in a fight with another bird. And what they have found is that when a bird is fighting with another member of the same species, it is just way more susceptible to predation in that moment. So that is where probably the biggest concern among scientists uh, for playbacks are. However, there also is kind of the opposite idea about this that has been hypothesized that has said that if a bird is scanning the area for a potential rival that it hears out there or that it thinks it's hearing, it could also just make it more alert in general. So it could make it more likely that the bird will detect that predator and, and uh, protect itself from that predator. So it honestly, in this way, playing a playback um, could actually decrease the chances of predation and increase the bird's chances of survival. Now, there have been very few studies that have actually looked at this, but there was one study that is pretty cool that looked at this. And this study looked at song sparrows. And what they did in this study was they played the playbacks of song sparrows, saw how it affected the behavior of song sparrows, you know, the song sparrows reacted to it. And then they played the playback of predators uh, while the song sparrows were reacting uh, to the playbacks of other song sparrows. And what they found was that pretty quickly the song sparrows reacted to the sound of the hawk and they stopped paying attention to the other song sparrows. So what this study showed was that at least in this one species, the birds were pretty good at not getting too carried away with the sound of their own species and they were still pretty alert to the presence of a predator. And there also has been some research that has shown that when they play playbacks of a species that's not a predator species, um, but just another species of harmless songbird, um, they found that that playback can make other species of songbirds more alert to a predator. So for example, in one study, they actually found that common minas were more quickly to react 
to an approaching predator after the playback of another species, the common bulbul, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, after the playback of the common bulbul was played. So what you can hypothesize here is that the playback of another harmless songbird species actually made another species more alert to predators, which is pretty interesting. But aside from predation, what also is super important to the survival of a species is how the birds are tending to their nestlings. So how do playbacks impact nesting? Well, this has also been studied, and what they found is that in some species it hasn't really impacted nesting that much, like some species of fairy wrens in Australia. But they did do a study in black-capped chickadees, which found that males that uh, were confronted with playbacks actually lost status in the eyes of their mates, uh, which reduced the chances of the reproductive success, which was pretty interesting. So honestly, looking at all this research, how do playbacks actually affect the survival of birds? Well, if you look at the research, I think it's pretty unclear whether it makes birds more susceptible to predation or nest failure. And again, honestly, I just think that this needs to be studied way more. So to conclude this video, I'm gonna share basically what I do when it comes to playbacks and my own personal opinion on it. So what I do is I do use playbacks, but only in special circumstances, which I'll get to. But I'll tell you when I don't use playbacks. I definitely don't use playbacks on special status species, okay? So if it's endangered or threatened, and I really try hard not to use playbacks during the breeding season, um, nesting season, so whether that's the spring or the summer in North America. I don't use playbacks in the same place all the time. And if I do use playbacks, it's only for like a couple seconds or something. And I usually almost always just use playbacks if I am going birding with someone else and trying to introduce them to the hobby of birding and a lot of times they've never gone before and they're just you know really interested in seeing new birds obviously there's times when you go birding where you just don't see as many birds it can be kind of hard to get a better look at them so those are the situations where i am more inclined to use a playback you know if it's a common bird if it's not during the breeding season if i'm just trying to get some people some great looks at birds to try to introduce them to the hobby of birding, it just embellishes the experience a bit. So that's really when I tend to use it, which I think my outlook on it is pretty well aligned with the guidelines from the ABA. And whether or not you use playbacks at all is up to you, of course. Um, but if you do use playbacks, you know, I would recommend following the guidelines of the ABA or doing what I do. Try to use your own ethical conscience as best you can. Um, but hopefully you learned something in this video and hopefully uh, the biologists out there can do a lot more research on this subject because to be honest, we just don't know that much about this subject. So again, subscribe if you want more nature and bird content. I also do a lot of health and fitness stuff too, which is connected to a lot of the nature stuff. Remember that nature is always an adventure, even if it's just a bird at your feeder in your backyard. Take that green pill and I'll catch you in the next one.